Welcome back to the 11th video in our 3D racer tutorial. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover a couple smaller things, um, but things are going to add a lot of functionality to our game. We're going to uh, add a mini map and worked on our baked lighting. So we've had issues with our lighting whenever we load a scene in the editor. Um, it darkens out, so we're going to fix that. And then finally, go ahead and make a second track, a nighttime track. And I'll leave you at the end of this video um, with you having the tools you need to make that next track. So let's just jump straight in. I'm in my first scene, uh, first track, sorry. So scenes, for me, it's 02 track 01. And before we get started, I, I just want to note that we did add a new font uh, in our last video. And it probably makes sense to go to your canvas and in your timer panel, ch taking, you know, shift click, you can click multiple of these, and changing your font to be that that one that you have. Now the spacing on it isn't going to be the same. Uh, so raw image here, this was our line. We're not going to use that one. The spacing isn't going to be the same, so you're going to need to go back and change your spacing here a little bit to make it fit. And I'm also going to go to my lap panel, do the same thing. Um, Uh, and you know play with this some because mine's clearly um, hanging over the edges and stuff uh, you can play with that I'm not going to do that in this video only because for the sake of time I'll go fix that off camera uh, but go do that just to get ahead of it because we're going to be copying this track pretty soon and having it done already would be really nice for you so I'm going to hit command s to save that work we just did and kind of close up my canvas so the way a mini cam works or a mini map works is typically have a camera that's situated above your map and um, it renders onto a texture. And then that texture is then placed onto another object. And that's really how we're going to do this. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, our player, car, I'm going to open that up just a little bit and control right click to make a camera as a child. And the name of that camera is going to be called Mini Map Cam. And it already spawns inside of our player, car. And we're going to need to position that um, up above it. So I'm going to use W to get my transform tools. I'm going to move it way up, high, above. Not too crazy. And then I'm going to rotate it. And your rotate tool is going to be kind of like messy. You see when you rotate, it's rotating based in the world position. Um, so I found that just rotating myself using the x-axis, just using the transform to do it works pretty well uh, and I'm going to move it forward some and that's a little too far I think I need to be at 90 90 on the X and I'm also going to want to rotate it along this Y axis so so that it looks like sort of like that and I like the way that is sitting I really want it more over my player character my players car so have my players car sort of in the center like that and that looks pretty good to me you don't have to have the same uh, numbers that I do you might have something a little bit different but this the setup looks acceptable to me so I'm going to save our progress there assets go to your textures folder and we are going to create a new render texture and the name of this render texture is going to be called mini map texture and press return to save that so this is the texture that can be applied to other objects that receives its information from the camera so let's go to your mini map, map cam and it asks right here target texture so it will send that information out to this mini map and your game view your camera should switch back because now it understands that this camera isn't actually an in-game camera it's more of a texture based thing so I'm going to save that again so all our, our mini maps actually going to be held in our canvas so let's go to canvas and close some of this up here uh, as a child of my canvas I'm going to control right click and I'm going to make a new UI and the first thing we should do is go ahead and make our um, a raw image here UI raw image 
and call it mini map. And it wants to know what texture goes there. And so that will be the camera. And you can see that our mini map texture goes right onto it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this mini map and anchor it to bottom right. And I'm probably going to move it off of here and play with it some. Let me get it off that edge just a little bit. Maybe even scale it up at some point. But for now, I'm going to, you know, let's just try scaling. I'm going to try 1.5, tab 1.5. So it looks a little bit bigger. I shouldn't create any real issues for us here. I also want to have, as another child of the canvas, a UI, and let's just do an image. And we'll call it mini map mask. And I like the square mini map is fine, but I want a rounded one. And so I want to show you how to do that really quick. Uh, if you have a source image, let's say, click on this dot here and choose KNOB knob. You can click that. This is our pre built image already inside of Unity. All right, let's go ahead and move the minimap mask into the corner. So, transform, move it over here. Um, gonna have to kind of play with it. We get the size the way we want it to be. I'm just gonna use the handles here. So, that is uh, T on your keyboard. I'm gonna scale this up. Something like that. And now on this mini map mask, add a component called mask. And if we make the mini map a child of it, you'll see that the edges of it won't go past the edges of our circle. So we can just make a circular mini map. Now, one thing I don't really like about uh, the way this minimap looks is the sort of jagged edges we get here with the the knob sprite. It's not you know really that clear, uh, and you can even see a little bit in our main game here. So uh, I wanted to add just a border to go along with this. So in Classroom, uh, I've given you a link to this Google Drive folder where I'm trying to keep the assets that we don't get from the asset store sort of organized. So this is video 11 and in here you should have a ring.png. Uh, so I'm gonna go over here and hit download. And I'm just gonna drag that. I think that should just go into, I'm putting everything in textures, which is probably not where everything belongs, but I know where it's at. So that's half the battle. Oops, so take the downloaded version and you should be able to drag it into your project. And I need to click on that and change that from default to 2D Sprite and hit apply. And then we have the circle. Um, you know my panel, my canvas, I want, I want to make a new empty control. Create empty, call it mini map. Yeah, I'm just call it mini map. I know we already have something called mini map, but I'm gonna drag the mini map mask into it so that um, you know. Let me take that out for a second. Let me move that that new mini map. I wanted it empty to kind of contain all this stuff. Uh, so let me move this over to the side. Make this large enough to contain everything again. Okay. Now I can drag Minimap Mask into here. I just want to have it all with, contained within one thing. Uh, and then as a child of this Minimap here, I'm going to control right click. Uh, and then I'm going to make a sprite UI, or basically just, let's go with image here. And call it Minimap Border. And right here it says none spray. I'm going to drag in my ring here. And then just get it lined up. 
so it looks a little bit cleaner on the outside. I feel like I want to move it up a little bit. I don't like that edge being off. That looks pretty good. Yeah, so that's it. We have a, we have a mini map, and that should follow. The camera's going to follow you around the ring as you're driving. It looks looks pretty good. Um, before we move on, let's fix this uh, lighting issue. So what we've noticed, and I'll just go ahead and give an example of this. Uh, scenes. Let me go to track select is if we're in play mode, uh, and I move into my next scene, the lighting comes in really dark. And the reason why that happens is um, because the editor, the scene lights are baked whenever we are finished editing. So while we're in the editor, if I'm just in track zero one, it will preserve this lighting information. But when I move into a scene, since we're in real-time lighting, it doesn't have that information. So it goes to basically a darker version of that. That actually won't happen if we built our game. We don't have to really worry about that. But it's not a bad idea to go ahead and just bake some lighting. So uh, I'm going to go up to Window, Rendering, Lighting. And it's really simple. Just go down to Generate Lighting. Now this might take a while because it's figuring in everything that's in this scene, all the lighting sources, but then also all the reflective surfaces. It's going to give in consideration to the terrain. Um, so we're just going to have to let this uh, run. I mean, dang it, do I have two audio listeners? Hmm, I thought I removed all the audio listeners. I'll go back through and try to find my second one. So, um, since I got a little while, I'm just going to uh, meet you when it's done. Okay, so it looks like it's done. Um, so, the way that we know that it's done is we go into our scenes folder. You should have a new little folder here with the same name as the scene that you just produced logging for. If you go inside, it has all this new information. Uh, basic sort of mapping and then a reflection probe. So it takes care of all the reflections and then information about the lighting itself. And this stuff will now be stationary. It's basically held as an object where beforehand, it was processing that information in real time, um, which is a little taxing for our uh, game. However, if we make any changes to the game, we need to rerun these lightings. So when you feel like your scene is sort of done, then you're welcome to do this. And that doesn't count canvas um, work, essentially. But when it comes to the actual level itself, like the trees and any other items like that, then you might want to run back and do this again. And for now, this is, this is totally fine. Uh, I might make chickens in the future, but I wanted just to show you that so we don't have that error anymore. I'm going to go ahead and save. And since you guys were just patiently waiting on me for that, I'm going to go ahead and change my uh, my canvas here uh, to make it go ahead and match because we're going to duplicate this scene in just a second. So as I'm finishing up here, I just noticed, you know, I have to take out my lap timer, these objects, and then I'm going to go scale the panel that they're in just to make it a little bit larger to accommodate and then put back in the different game objects that are children of that panel. So I think that looks a lot uh, better. Okay. So kind of got everything like set up again. And this, this is starting to feel and look more and more like a game uh, every time. So in our scenes folder, let's take track zero. So zero two track one and hit, I'm gonna control right click here. I want to check something really quick. Okay, command D to duplicate. That's what you need to do. So you get a second one where you get a number one that follows the name here. Go back into my specter. 
and I want to rename this one control rename and this is going to be zero three track zero two just to get that in order and if I double click on it it looks exactly the same as what we had beforehand um, but we are going to make this into a nighttime um, track so to do so the first thing we want to do is let's just talk about uh, what's being carried over everything that we had in the last scene is carried over into this one including the terrain but what's important about that is that this terrain is actually a game object so if we made any changes to the terrain itself uh, playing with the trees or anything on this level, then it will actually change it in our first level. So we actually don't want to do that. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and delete our terrain manager. Let's do the manager. Do I want to delete the manager? Yeah. <clears throat> so that you're not on the ground <clears throat> anymore save that and then we're going to add back in 3d object terrain okay right press return and we made a uh, actually we created an empty last time called terrain manager so i'm going to create that again um, and then make the terrain a child of that where's that terrain manager at though is it at zero zero i'm going to move it to zero 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 uh, and then drag the terrain onto it Oops, like this and then we also had as a child of that control right click a terrain spawner and we added the vegetation spawner component and we need to assign this terrain so drag, drag, that, drag that onto here so that it will spawn onto that so there's that. Uh, so we're going to remake our second level. But for this one, it's going to be a nighttime level. So there's not tons that we need to do. Before I go on to do that, start building that, there's another thing I did too. I had walls uh, that are already in the scene. Um, and I'm kind of curious. Is my terrain up higher than it was originally? Zero. I don't think so. Let me go look at my car. No, we came in at the same spot, so it should be fine. But I'm going to take all these walls here because they don't apply to this one. And uh, I'm going to leave the waypoints for now. I'm not going to. I'm not even going to delete these. I'm just going to disable them. So in case those colliders are sitting out in the world, we don't really want them uh, out there. Um, so yeah, we're sort of starting fresh here again. So on this terrain, I'm, because this is all going to be a nighttime scene, and I want to make it more like an urban, um, you know, or like a nighttime racetrack, I'm just going to apply one layer for now, uh, just to kind of get everything laid out. So over here on paint terrain, off of my terrain object, I'm going to scroll down. Okay, yeah, edit terrain layers, and I'm going to add a layer. And we already have asphalt as one. So we're going to select that. And that will just paint the entire surface with an asphalt sort of look. Um, save that. So for this to be nighttime, um, it's going to be pretty easy to do. Uh, we're going to reassign our skybox. Let's start with that. Because skybox actually produces light into the world. Um, so I'm going to go back in my lighting panel. I'll still have mine open over here and go to environment. And here's our skyboxes here. And if I scroll, I think Sky01 was like the darkest one. Let me look around the world really quick. Yeah, there's that. And then on our directional light, I'm going to bring down our, go back to the inspector to find that. Maybe some intensity we might come down some. Darken it up just a little bit. Yeah, actually, zero is pretty good for this. Uh, and actually, I'm going to go back to my skybox and bring down that intensity as well. 
You know what? I think I want to bring down the skybox just a tad and then turn my directional lighting back up. Just, just a smidge here. There you go. I think that looks a little bit better. Because uh, I still want to be able to see things in the world. Um, another option, too, is we can take our directional lighting and rotate it some. So it's not the shadows look a little bit differently. A little different. Something like that. So it sort of darkens out some. Okay. Now that we've done that, we want to add some... Uh, lights the world. What if I do indirect multiplier? You know, I think it could be pretty dark. I think we can get away with almost zero on directional light. <laughs> Let me look at my um, skybox one more time. Hmm. Is this reflections? Yeah. Maybe the reflections. I'll bring reflections down some. And then bring my directional lighting back up just a little bit. Because I want to be able to see my car. <clears throat> and so it feels like the light's coming from another source way up high. Yeah, that's just... I think that's too bright. Let me... I, I'm, I'm okay with that right there. We're going to be putting lighting in here. So I'm going to go to the front of my car. So onto Sky Car. Find that. Rotate this around. And let's add in some... Um, headlights really quick so as a child of sky, sky car control right click add a light and we're going to choose a spotlight and I'll call this headlight zero one so I rotate this around let me find this point of origin here. I'm going to move it into the... So it's right in the center of the car. I'm going to move it up to the front. And right now we can't really see what the beams are looking like. Um, come on up and move it over. Now, what will be important for us later on, we're going to make, I have other cars. I think that's our next video is adding the other cars, is getting the, the, our headlights sort of in the same spot because we're going to use the same headlights uh, no matter what car we have. So they need to be sort of in the same position. Um, and I'm going to duplicate that. Well, let's not duplicate. Let's go ahead and add our um, light. So we're going to do bring up that intensity a lot. You can already see that we're seeing some of the headlights here. But we're really going to want to ramp that up. I think I'm also going to change the angle here and try to angle it down some like that. And then turn up the intensity. And I can even play with how wide these lights are. All right, that one looks okay. So let's Command D and change the name of this one to Headlight 2. And move that one over just a little bit so that it matches the front of our car. Like. Oops. Right about there. Let me see if that looks in the right spot. Yeah. There you go. So we have two headlights. Uh, I think I need to broaden them both up, though. Just kind of go wider here. Headlight one. Widen up again, two. And I think that looks good. Um, so that's our first headlight. So what I'm going to go do, I'm going to add in a another empty inside of the sky car to hold these, so I'll call this headlights, drag these in as a child of that, take headlights, command D, duplicate, and call this uh, enemy headlights, the, so I'm taking the duplicate and doing that, and then dragging that into enemy car 01, 
um, and then moving that on over to my enemy car. What if I just, let me zero it out, zero, zero. Actually, point eight looks like it's pretty close to where I want to be on my enemy car. Well, look at that. That's pretty spot on. I might need to move it back some, actually. Let me see. Drag in my Z. Yeah, and then move it over just a little bit. I, don't, I think that looks pretty good. So we have headlights for our nighttime scene. Uh, nighttime scene. So um, one of the last couple things I want to do is, um, well, I want to go ahead and mention, please don't add any trees to this yet because we're doing this outdoor sort of environmental nighttime thing. And let's not add any um, up or down terrain. Let's keep it like a flat track because I really want to spend more time on this track on just laying out uh, objects. So uh, you have in your package manager, so window, package manager, I purchased this very recently for you. If you make sure you're set to packages my assets, uh, you can look up the low. Let's see if I just put low poly. I think the name was racing. Maybe it's race. Yeah. So Street Racer is the name of it, uh, and it's a really big package. Uh, that's got all kinds of great things and uh, let's go ahead and download this and then when I'm finished downloading or importing it uh, We'll talk about what's in here and how it's going to apply to this track Once you have the package downloaded uh, you'll see it inside your assets folder uh, Polygon Street Racer. I tried to keep my folder organized down here my assets organized, but you know, this is a big package. I don't know that I want to move around. So I'm going to leave it here uh, for the time being. Inside of it, you have a couple folders. Prefab is what we're most interested in. Um, I'm going to double click on that. And then we have a bunch of different um, separating folders here. There is a vehicles folder um, that we will be playing with, like going into inside of presets. Please don't mess with these yet. Please don't drag them into your game because uh, I want to help you set up a system. And the next video is going to be about switching out what car you have whenever on a player select screen. So for now, just hold tight on that. I really want you to build your second track uh, first. So I'm going to go back into the prefabs part of Polygon Street Racer. And you have a props folder and an environments folder and a buildings folder. And that's what we're going to look at the most. Uh, and props, I want to show you really quickly how to build some street lamps because, you know, being that we have a nighttime scene, that would be a good uh, thing pre-built for you. Uh, if you, I think it's called pole. Yeah, if I type in pole here, if I search in this, you're going to have a bunch of different ones. I think this is one I used the first time. Yeah, there's another pole in here that has an issue with its material. And if, I, I can't remember if it's this now, command Z. Anyways, I'm just going to drag this into the scene um, and put it on the like Y zero, right? Try to get it onto the ground. Um, anyways, this pole is the one we're looking for. There's one that has an issue with materials. Don't worry about that. And I'm going to drag in this prop. I think it's called pole large lights. Drag that into the scene as well. I'm going to make it a child of the pole and then reset its position so that it's right in the middle. Right. And then move it up so that it's at the top of the pole. Back out just a little bit so I can see. Double click so I can get a better view. Uh, and it looks like right about there is where we want to go. Um, so, as a child of these large lights, I'm going to add a new control right click light, and it's going to be a spotlight. And we're going to do like we did earlier. I'm going to rotate it, I'm going to move it downwards. Kind of create, I think I was playing with like a 40 or maybe like a 60 degree angle. And I want to extend it downwards. So, really. 
that range. I don't have to do it that way, of course. I can just do this right here. And you'll start to see it light up the ground a little bit. Um, I probably don't have to go that far. Gonna, let me turn that intensity. Yeah, I can probably pull that range down just a little bit and then just turn up the intensity. And I have a light here. And honestly, it doesn't have to be absolutely accurate. Um, you know, relative to these lights here. I don't think your players are going to really care or know for that. Uh, so I'm just going to duplicate Command-D. <clears throat> just take another one and just rotate it around. And just put out a few of these. Yeah, so you're going to have to kind of play with these a little bit to kind of get the effect that you're looking for. Uh, mm. Yeah, they start to drown each other out a little bit. Uh, so maybe just four is what I'm going to get out of this one here. And that'll be okay for what we're doing. This last one's pretty intense. So I'm going to turn it down some. Yeah, that's really the issue here. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> Once you have one of these done, it's pretty easy to then create your own prefab from this. So go into Assets, Prefab, drag this in. I would probably rename this whole thing. Um, street Lights. And then make your own prefab here. And make it an original prefab. Uh, so that you have your own copy that you can just start dragging out into the world. Um, and I would also suggest that you go ahead and create an empty called environment. I have one left over from my last one that I've done. And creating as a child of it a empty called lighting, track borders, and then buildings. I have these so that I can start putting in my street lights into the lighting folder. Just kind of keep everything nice and organized uh, as I put more and more of these out into the world as such. Um, for the borders inside of Polygon Street Racer prefabs, I think it's in props actually. Uh, curb, yeah, you have curb, uh, so there's like a barrier thing here that you can lay out. I'd rather you do that than trying to use like a brush to build the streets out. And also inside of environment, yeah, you also have these barriers here. Uh, you have environments, you have some street tiles. I prefer you not really mess with them. Um, I don't really see any good like corner pieces, but I could be overlooking them. Um, I guess you're welcome to use them, but I think you, your time is better spent just adding barriers around the outside. Keep it simple. Once again, we're using a waypoint system for our enemy car. So just even a simple oval track or something that's like L-shaped would be really nice. I'm going to go back and make a track in the, uh, between this video and the next one. And I'm going to fill it up with some of these props, really make sure my barriers look good. And making sure that my... I have a few buildings here. I can put a few buildings out and kind of fill in the space in to make it feel uh, a little more lived in. Uh, I think you could even, out of curiosity, if I drag this warehouse in, let me zoom in on that. Does it have, no, maybe. Um, you can kind of play with these buildings and uh, maybe get some different effects. I don't really want to get into all that, but I think there's a garage door here that you could probably disable so that, you know, you're, you could drive through. Uh, there's some ways to, to add this. So I want you to actually have some fun on the night circuit, but make the track simple and spend more time getting the barriers set up 
so that your waypoint system makes sense. Right now you still have your current waypoints in here. And so your enemy car is still going to follow them. But we left them in here so that you could just move them uh, to kind of find your track that way. Um, so that would be my suggestion is to take the current waypoint system and lay that out. Uh, so that will be it for this video. When I see you in the next one, I'll have my night track completed. And I hope you will have all of that taken care of as well. And if I didn't mention earlier, uh, turning off your walls in this level would be ideal. So you don't already have this laying out. So.